Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Let's Be Creative with LBC. My name is Hannah and today I'm going to teach you one of my very, very favorite drama games. It's one that not a lot of people know, so I'm excited to teach it to you today. And it's awesome because it's one that's very easy to play both by yourself and with other groups of people. So even if you have no one around to play with you at the moment, you can still play this game. So the game is called Just a Minute. It's based on a British radio game show that's been on the air for literally decades. They usually bring in professional comedians to play the game, but since most of us aren't professional speakers yet, uh, we're going to do a simple version and then I'll toss in the advanced rules as well, just in case you want to challenge yourself a little bit. The basic idea of the game is that you choose a topic of some sort and you try to talk about that topic for one full minute without breaking any of the rules. The rules for speaking are pretty simple in the simplified version. The rules are, one, you have to stay on topic. If your topic is spaghetti, you can't suddenly start talking about what it's like when it rains outside, okay? You have to speak smoothly and continuously. You can't have long pauses in which you're just waiting and trying to think of something to say. So you have to keep coming up with things that you can talk about. And third, no filler words. Filler words are things like um and uh and like, and this is the one that trips up a lot of people because we often use way more filler words than we know. And it's not until we try something like this that we realize, oh my gosh, I use those a lot. <laughs> so let me give you an example of how this might work. If you're playing by yourself, you just want to try to score your personal best. So you set a timer and if you mess up and if you know you mess up, what you do is you just restart the timer and try again. So let me show you what this look could look like if you played it by yourself. So I'm going to think of a topic. You can choose topics any way you want. I'm just going to think of the first food that comes to mind and that's going to be eggs. So eggs are going to be my topic. You might not think you have a lot to say about that, but I'm going to try. So I'm going to try to talk about eggs for one minute without breaking any of those rules. Listen carefully and see if you can catch anything that I break. I will definitely notice it. So here we go. One minute beginning now. Eggs are a food. They typically come out of birds such as chickens, which is the most common form of egg. You can make all kinds of foods with it. You can make omelets and scrambled eggs and and I ran out of ideas already. <laughs> so uh, that went about 14 seconds. I think I can probably do better than that. I'm gonna try one more time and see if I can get longer than 14 seconds on that. Surely there are other things I can say about eggs. Here we go, one minute. Eggs are a food that you can scramble or put in pastries, or if it's Easter, you can dye them and hide them all over the place. Sometimes there are little plastic eggs that have candy inside for these holidays, but they also make just a really good breakfast food. I know somebody who likes to eat fried egg sandwiches. That's not something that I really love, but it's something that actually is fairly popular. <sighs> And then I ran out of things to say about it. So you have to keep coming up with new ways of talking about this topic. I only made it 27 seconds. It's been a little while since I played this, so I'm kind of, uh, I'm a little, a little rusty on this. But uh, just to challenge myself even further, let me teach you the advanced version. In the advanced version, which is the version they play on the actual show, they have those rules, but then they also add in a rule called no repetition, which means that you're not allowed to repeat anything. Now you can repeat the main topic, if I was talking about eggs, I could still talk, I could still use the word eggs. And they have exceptions for little tiny words like a uh, and the, because it would be very difficult to say any kinds of sentences if you couldn't repeat those. But everything else, uh, if I said scrambled twice, I would have to start over. If I said chickens twice for eggs, I'd have to start over. And so you really have to start thinking about what are different ways that you can say things to still tell the story. So I'm going to start with uh, an example for myself. I'm going to, let me see what's a good topic. I'm going to talk about dragons and try to talk about dragons in this advanced version. And so listen carefully for not only any hesitations or pauses or awkward filler words, but also listen for any words that I might be repeating besides dragons or something, some really tiny word. Okay, let me see how far I can go on this one. I only made it to 27 on the first, so uh, here we go. All right, dragons are a type of mythological lizard that are known for flying through the air and breathing fire. There are many stories that also involve them collecting and hoarding gold in their caves, and then brave adventurers such as knights come to attack them and free the towns of their 
and I ran out of words. That was not too, too bad. I didn't come up into any repetitions, but I still only made it about 21 seconds. So my goal would be to do that again and again until I finally got to the end. And it's pretty tricky, but it's a really, really good way to practice your public speaking skills. And once you start involving other people, it can also be a really, really fun group game. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring in a friend who's going to help me teach this game and show you what it looks like when you're playing it with other people. Here we go. So today I have Bethany with me who is going to help me demonstrate how you play this in groups. So what's going to happen is if one of us messes up and breaks one of the rules, the other person can raise their hand. I'll stop the timer and they can issue their challenge. If I am agreeing and fair and say, yeah, that's exactly what I did. I messed it up. Then it will go back to them. Sometimes it helps to have a third party to be the impartial judge. It just in case there are any arguments about which challenges are correct. But for now, it's just going to be us. And let's choose a topic. Bethany, name the first animal that comes to mind. Porcupine. Porcupine. That was not what I expected. <laughs> so our topics are going to be porcupines. So I'm going to try to talk about porcupines for one full minute without breaking any of those rules. And if I do, you get to raise your hand and challenge me and try to take that topic over. Yeah. So one minute beginning now. Porcupines are a kind of animal that are most well known for their spiky, prickly something. Yeah, I, I, I don't think you even say the challenge out loud. I just ran out of words. I think you don't have to say about porcupines, so I might be in trouble if it comes back <laughs> so to So we'll me. see what happens with the rest of the minute. Yeah. All right. Well, I didn't talk for very long, so you have 51 seconds left yes, in a minute a to time say time as time. much as you can about porcupines until I catch another mistake. 51 seconds beginning now. In the movie Homeward Bound, which to our younger sister was called the cute dogs, there is a moment when the feline chants, he's not a feline, he's a canine. <laughs> Correct, he is not a feline. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I have 43 more seconds. Was that hesitation or deviation from the truth? It was, it was, it was a hesitation. You stumbled over your words and got stuck when you realized yeah, you said the wrong the thing. Part. All right, uh, 43 seconds for me. Here we go. In the movie that Bethany was talking about, there's a scene where one of the dogs is traveling and sees a porcupine and approaches it only to be slapped in the face with its spiky tail. And it hurts a lot. Yes. I think you said spiky earlier. I think I did. I think I talked about them being spiky. All right, you've yeah. got 26 more seconds to talk about porcupines beginning now. Porcupines have very sharp quills on the back of their tail and their back. Pause. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> well, yeah, at least you remember that they were called quills. All right, I have yes, 19, I was so excited. I have 19 seconds left and uh, here we go. I seem to recall something that I watched as a child in which somebody used a porcupine quill as a pen, but I can't remember what that was. I just have this image in my mind of somebody maybe actually removing it from the porcupine, dipping it in ink, must have been some kind of cartoon. And that is my one minute. <laughs> so I made it to the end of that. So you can see how that kind of works. It goes back and forth. If you have more than two people, anybody, whoever hears it first, gets to raise their hand and challenge. And so you can go back and forth. You can start keeping track of points of who has challenged correctly the most, who had it at the end of the topic. And then when you finish that one minute, you move on to a new topic. And that's how you play with a group. So that's how you play Just a Minute. If you want to hear more people do this, you can find recordings of the official BBC radio version. You can find them on YouTube and you can definitely find them on the BBC radio website. And there are years of archives where you can listen to comedians from all over try to tackle this journey. And it's a really fun thing to listen to and a really fun thing to try for yourself. And once you get really good at it and practice it a lot, it really does help improve your speaking. It makes you think a little bit more about how you're saying things and it kind of forces you to slow down and to speak a little bit more clearly. So I highly recommend it, not only for fun, but also because it genuinely helps you improve your public speaking. And if that's ever something that makes you nervous or that you struggle with, this is an awesome way to fight that in a really fun and sometimes very silly way. So awesome. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you play this with your friends and family. And don't forget to tune in again tomorrow at 1pm for more Let's Be Creative Arts content. We will see you then.